The rise and fall of emo. Okay. Hey. Emo's so, not dead. I'm Raven, your acid bath princess of the darkness. This is a classic. Has there ever been a teenage subculture as reviled and misunderstood as the humble emo? For a time, it was a catch-all term of derision, reserved for anyone who wore black, listened to My Chemical Romance, mm -hmm. and exhibited some worrying self-roping tendencies. But all that moping and the music that inspired it actually has a complex history. And to understand it fully, we have to go back to the beginning. When aliens well, no created us. the name of Emo's Patient Zero, they were likely a member of the Washington hardcore punk scene in the 1980s. Bands like Minor, Threat, Fugazi, and State of Alert were producing three chord albums for small, devoted audiences. And like their emo descendants, these punks wore black, cut their hair with industrial lawn equipment, and took themselves very seriously. But these punks were also deeply political, even expressly anarchist. Like these two specimens who decry the woes of capitalism while hanging out in a mall, with none other than a somehow still very old Bernie Sanders. Wait, that's what Bernie does Sanders? Mean? What does it say? Or it doesn't mean anything? Or what the um, fuck? It's just basically. Saying, Where's his emo phase? To heck with society. Yeah, to heck with capitalism. Ronald Reagan can go fudge himself in his bunghole. By 1985, the DC punk scene was in need of a makeover, as it had caught a well earned reputation for being moronically violent, mostly owing to the fact that their concerts looked like a cross between a Black Friday stampede and an Indian train carriage. I've always hated mosh pits and walls of death. It's really some embarrassing, to be honest. And some call it the skin. Like to watch. But, uh, it's probably fun to be in. Dancing, that's normally what you're doing. They just call this more or less a slam. Just keep moving, Whoa. Keep moving your arms and stuff. During what was known as Revolution cool. Summer, bands like Rites of Spring and Embrace offered a new direction for the genre. These artists wrote more introspective lyrics and rejected the scene's political posturing for a whinier, more emotional perspective. Thrasher magazine called this style emo core, but even then it was meant as a disparity. Thanks, Resub Core must be the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, emotional hardcore. As if hardcore wasn't emotional to begin with. This would set a precedent that would follow the emo plague all the way into its heyday, with bands constantly uncomfortable with being labelled as sad sacks screaming about their feelings. Despite this, the post Yeah, but that's great. We love to scream about coast feelings. To coast over the next decade, giving birth to a brood of ear assaulting sub sub genres. There were the radio friendly incel jams of nerd rock. There was screamo music, the official soundtrack to school shootings everywhere, and of course there was pop punk, emo's fun-loving cousin, whose close association. I, I don't know about that last one. Undoing. But it was bands like Sunny Day Real Estate and Jawbreaker that charted the course to what emo would become, producing punk-adjacent hits with pleasing guitar melodies and lyrics dripping with personal drama. <laughs> It wasn't really until 2001 where the iconic image of emohood solidified like bacon grease on the oven floor of popular culture. Jimmy Eat World released the Hey Jimmy Eat World. Album, they Man weren't emo. Bleed, they were emo. Stream hit that was as irritating was as it was band? Billboard friendly. Suddenly, record executives realized that emos were more than just basement dwelling dweebs and were in fact a lucrative growth market. Now we're cooking. This is the emo I remember. As broadband Not fucking Jimmy Eat World. Widespread, the irritating screech of a That's just mainstream radio shit from back in the day. Sound of teenagers expressing themselves. Real emo is like broken side. Culture to truly spread through the internet. Websites like LiveJournal and MySpace acted as the sweaty public toilet door handles, accelerating emo's bubonic burst into mainstream culture. Emo fans would plaster their profile with Euro. lyrics from their favorite bands, create fan sites, and communicate with other people who like to play noughts and crosses on their forearms. But most of all, these online spaces were responsible for disseminating what became known as the iconic emo look. The emo oh, look was actually Taylor Swift. necessities and tons of optional extras. But if one is to truly understand the emo, one must become the emo. Look, I'll admit I went too far on this one, but I believe in committing. Looks to pretty it. cool, that's actually. What emo is about, you know, committing to looking, looking like good. A fucking idiot. Eye makeup was a must. Slavered it kind of looks like the kind of guy that would offer you a really, really shitty deal for your soul. That lives inside all of our face meat. Black jeans that looked like they were painted on were also a must and could be accessorized with a studded belt, which could be worn anywhere on the body provided it was at a 45 degree angle. Black lipstick was optional. 
but it was encouraged, a fashion choice which only ever reminds me of this line from The Sopranos. Look like a Puerto Rican whore. Make me sick. So? Band t-shirts were also very important, but anything black would suffice. There are also these separate arm sleeve things which make it look like your arms are wearing lingerie. Another optional extra was turning your lower lip into a playground for bacteria, as well as a target for any school bully and or passing crow. Of course, the most what? important part of the emo armor is dyed black hair, for... straightened to obscure teenage for bullies? Actors, and to make Were sure you to like in the mirror as little pull as possible. On lip piercings? The emos paved the way for many norms of social media. They pioneered the full body selfie, and they were applying filters and Photoshop to their photos when Instagram was just a vapid dream in the head of whoever was inventing it. And emo culture was also discussing mental health and LGBT rights long before it dominated public discourse, and admittedly, it was a bit fucked up at times. But today, the internet only approaches these topics the in a mature, drugs long and manner. gift sub, and we have these Nicodemus fringe, spondling the frontiersmen Sam. to thank for it. It doesn't feel hot or uncomfortable yet. In fact, it doesn't yeah. really feel like much. Well, that's good because it's not meant to touch your scalp. So, um, it's not meant to touch your scalp. It's no. good to know. By 2004, record labels had fully weaponized the emo virus. In a space of two years, it would go from Is being a public health concern to a full-blown pandemic. There were the wildly successful wine pop stylings of Fall Out Boy. That's a band not. Of five that's members not. E only four chins. Does, and there were the theater school. That was never an emo band. Disco, an act famous for their obnoxiously long song what? titles and that one bit in their one song where a guy says a naughty no no word. What a shame the poor girl's pride is a whore. Sensing the dark winds blowing towards the This is like a this is a very off look at emo well. back in the early days. He's missing gold to be played like actual gold tracks and attempted to get all sensitive with the release of I Miss You, a song dedicated to the relatable woes of missing your ex-girlfriend and spying. Fall Out Boy was not a, not an emo band. They were a pop rock radio band. Infected themselves with the emo vibe. I was on the forefront of emo. lyrics with their six times platinum album, American Idiot. But Emo's commercial peak came on the 12th of September, 2006, in the form of a literal parade. My Chemical Romance's ode to a cancer death fever dream somehow became an enormous mainstream hit. For months following its release, it was inescapable. It was playing on the radio, on music video channels, on LimeWire, and from the back of Lime the wire, bus, fuck playing on yeah. the TV speakers of someone's Motorola Razor. And if that one sounds too specific, that's because I was the one playing it. Hello, Moto. It is the third law of culture that any action is always met with an equal and opposite backlash. And Emo's front lash was so seismic that its critics arrived armed with all the unholy powers of the mainstream media. Now, emo is a term you may or may not have come across. It's short for emotional. Oh the parents about the so-called emo. I remember this shit. Read, what is emo? Well, Bob, this is something that has come out of the internet and into music and the lives of Utah teens. News reports on emos were designed to terrify these parents, some slava? focusing on the subculture. Exactly, the no, he's missing all of the actual emo gold, like Silverstein and shit. About <clears throat> gender bending. Gender bending is also part of the emo culture. Boys wear girl pants and makeup. Girl pants! But like any teenage culture, emo was specifically designed to piss off parents. So its vilification in the mainstream media probably helped it with its target demographic. But emo's real downfall was orchestrated by the very forces that brought it to prominence. When did emo die? Emo that is a good question. I never even thought to think of that. And the confessional blog, but it also brought another internet pastime to the fore. Cyberbullying. Being an emo kid they were bullied? in 2006 That's why like they went wearing extinct? a MAGA hat to your liberal arts lecture. You were kind of asked bullied to, to, for to every extinction? For fringe, there was a full body cringe and an army of trolls waiting to pounce. You might remember this emo hate anthem that did the rounds in 2006. And I wear skin tight clothes while hating my life. If I said I like girls, I'd only be half right. But the single most egregious case of online emo phobia came in the form of National Emo Kid Beatdown Day. Cleverly scheduled for the 6th of June, 2006. Get it? You get it. From MySpace to 4chan, the happy hate crime holiday spread like, spread like septus from a septum piercing. And while there were no recorded emo pummelings on the day, anti-emo violence became a genuine global problem. It was a what? declared a hate crime here in the UK, and there were actually roaming gangs of anti-emo vigilantes in Mexico City. This young emo also, 666 was the Falador Massacre Day. God rest its soul. 
but his attackers run runescape history but if i were to retroactively point to the final digital nail when emo cyber coffin it was this where it became a punchline for youtube's favorite sexual predator sorry i mean youtube's favorite alleged sexual predator you know what, this one I believe. Maybe I Onision really did kill it. It might be time to return to your natural colour and force yourself to like jazz or something. Ah, jazz. The thinking man's mind. Is tier one nose in the recent fire As for the bands? Well, like a toilet that won't flush, some of them just kept that shit up. With groups like Paramore maintaining a loyal fan base to this day. But the main exhibitors of the emo I mean, they're style still good. made it their mission to distance themselves as far as possible from the label. Nathan quoted, quoted as saying emo is a pile of shit. Oh shit, yes. Why is it? citing 90s emo as the one true emo. Well, emo as it is today, which is nothing like emo as it was um, when I was growing up. And Panic at the Disco frontman Brendan, Brendan Uri? Oh, I don't know. Has made no secret of the fact that he just wants to close the goddamn door on the song that made his band so popular. Maybe you should, Tony. The label became so toxic that it even sunk one of the era's most profitable film franchises. With Tobey Maguire's oh, dance number in Spider-Man being the big. only thing that anyone remembers from that cinematic yeah. stillbirth. Fuck. So after applying a healthy That should have given a new birth to emo, emo honestly. Rash disappeared as quickly as it developed. It survived as an insult and a meme a lot longer than it actually lived in cultural relevance. And ironically, that's probably what kept its memory alive long enough to inspire genuine nostalgia. Just two years ago, Post Malone dropped Welcome to the Black Parade during a DJ set. And look at the crowd, they're loving it. And you know what? I mean, the Maybe music is still good. Like, I don't my brain. You can I shit like on some of the too. emo culture, but the music still yeah. I mean, slaps. It's not really good, but like it's, it's an anthem. I mean, it's not Mozart or Ambient Nonsense 12 by Aphex Conjoined Twin, but it's Wrong. good. I still listen to it, I still like it. Good. It doesn't I mean, you sense, can enjoy your Playboy yes, Cardi, and I'll enjoy some of the old school boner jams from fucking Silverstein and shit. Thanks to the Prime Thrill House. Straight up, just no. What do you listen to, CB? Or CB? What's on your playlist? Stage is yours. What do you listen to, Sabi? I'm expecting a Playboy Cardi or something. Thanks to Tier 1 Ox. Ooh, maybe like ambient noise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me like your top three. You don't have to think too hard about it. It wasn't that hard of a question. Just, just asking what you listen to. Okay, he, he just left. Okay, not very confident in your music choices. Then I see. Thanks, the resub slam. LimeWire's LimeWire was the shit, man. Thanks to Prime Victor. Hello, Iceberg. Paramore's considered emo? Of course they were. Aliens caught on camera. Haven't we already seen that? 